Microsoft made $6.6 .6 billion. Sales rose just shy of $21 billion. But according to the company's CFO, the, uh, the company is facing headwinds from a challenging PC market and, of course, the ever-present iPad threat as well. Well, we can now speak to the president of Microsoft International, Jean-Philippe Courtois. So, I mean, talk to me a little bit about slowing PC sales. Can we expect this uh, softening to continue in the coming year? I mean, first of all, Mariam, we, 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 announced, <laughs> yeah. some, we announced some very yeah. strong results. Actually, balance both on the consumer side, well, Xbox 365 has been incredibly mm. strong, reaching 66 million products sold worldwide, number one in the US in many markets. And then on the enterprise side, we had a double digit growth as a company. Mm. So if you look at that, actually the stock went up. So I but think the, that the PC news was pretty good. The PC sales is really uh, the, 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 the following. Number one, you had actually a very serious issue of yeah. supply chain in Thailand, as you know, unfortunately, which has been impacting a lot yeah. the OEM PC manufacturers. On the other hand, you also have some, yeah, some, some clearly challenges, especially in Europe, in terms of consumer patterns uh, on PC or netbooks compared to the last year. So if you combine the two things together, yeah, yeah I mean, the PC sales have not been the best. So uh, more the generally, no, <laughs> but so, so more generally, Mr. Couture, tell me, what are the big themes that you take away from this year's Davos that are of relevance for you and indeed Microsoft, your business? Well, certainly as, as a company, uh, we see a very strong responsibility in driving both economic and social opportunities. And I've been participating to a few Davos sessions where I must say, including the African session, which was a great one, and more discussion in Europe, where the main theme was all about the potential jobs opportunities we all need to create. And as a company, that's a theme we've been incredibly focused on. Mm. Education, so basically providing digital skills to all the youngsters and unleashing the potential to create jobs. We are a strong believer that small businesses and entrepreneurs We'll be creating actually more jobs, including in Europe. And whereabouts is Microsoft hiring right now? Well, Microsoft keeps hiring actually yeah. thousands of people. But more than that, we are working with more than 750,000 partners, ICT companies across the world. You know, today we'll be rewarding four startups companies one from Jordan, one from Croatia, one from the US, from Ecuador. And we've been putting together a startup program globally called BSpark. Mm. And we've been actually helping working with 45,000 new, very cool entrepreneurs worldwide building on the cloud technologies. It sounds like you're focusing mainly on developing in emerging markets? No, actually. This but that's is where the hiring is happening? No, the hiring is also happening in Europe. You know, in Europe, you've got 90 million jobs mm. uh, with actually all the small, medium businesses. And there's more to be, to, to, to be created. So I think we see a role as a, an enabler of technology skills getting actually more spread across the economy. And small businesses are a great way to do that. The last time we spoke, just a couple of months ago, you were talking to me about the divergence between uh, consumer sales, consumer sales which have been quite slow because of the, the macro environment, uh, and then business spending, which had actually been relatively healthy. Do you expect that trend to continue? Well, again, it's very contrasted. As I told you, as an entertainment platform, Xbox is doing really well. I mean, incredibly well, very strong. Kinect, which is this cool device mm. where you become the controller yourself. I mean, 18 million units sold worldwide and 40 million live users globally. I think on the consumer side, we see a variety of devices. People love bringing smart devices. And mm. You know, we talked about the smartphones, which is growing a lot, but also tablets and all kind of form factors. And that's a very competitive, tough market for Microsoft, isn't it, given uh, how much of it is actually dominated by the likes of Android and Apple? It's, it's not going to be easy catching up. Well, you know, as a company, we are extremely dedicated both to cloud services, to business and consumers, yeah. and devices. Yeah. Two sets of devices, the phone. The phone, we just heard some great news from Nokia, after just a couple of weeks, going uh, and certainly entering the market very strongly with the Windows Phone device, which is very fluid and cool, with more than one million sales across Europe in particular. And now we're on the verge of reimagining Windows with mm. the, the future of Windows, that, and we give a glimpse of Windows 8, mm. which is all about this very new user interface, touch interface, going beyond actually just the Intel processors on all kind of processors and opening the world to developers. Talk to me about the difficulties in reaching out to consumers. I mean, especially when I, I go back to that point about Microsoft 
trying to regain lost ground to Android and Apple. You know, this is not, it, it's not easy to, uh, you know, to compete with these guys, is it? Well, you know, we, we, we look at the, the couple of assets we have as a company. Number one, as I said, we are doing a lot of great work on the devices. If you combine the Xbox platform, which is more than a gaming platform, it's an entertainment platform, you can actually search an Xbox with your voice. And you use the Metris interface with your, with your hands to find media content, to find audio videos. Then you can do the same actually on the phone as well, Windows mm. Phone, and you'll see the same happening actually also on the tablets. Then you have to bridge that with the cloud services. Microsoft is today providing services to a billion people on the planet, including Skype recently, that has been joining the Microsoft family. Mm. And we are so excited to see Skype you know, really being used by a couple hundred million people in the world every day. So this coming year, do you have your eye on any deals? Are there any acquisitions? And if so, whereabouts are you looking for those opportunities? You know, this year we're incredibly dedicated, number one, to helping actually our customers across the world, especially in, in the countries where it's getting tough, to save costs, to be more efficient and effective. And number two, it's all about innovation. I think the lineup mm -hmm. we have innovation coming up, the beta of Windows 8 will come actually late February. That's mm. official, so I can talk about it. Okay, February, yeah. Yeah. So just to tell us a little bit about that then. Well, you know, that is all about reimagining Windows. You'll, you'll see, because we've been already showing an incredibly cool Metro living tiles interface. But you can also actually switch back and forth between this new interface and your Windows 7 interface, which is, you know, being sold to 500 million people on the planet already. And we have been announcing the opening of a Windows Store, unleashing the opportunity to hundreds of thousands of developers, hence my comments on the use and entrepreneurship, because we will expect a lot of yeah. cool new applications being developed, both for consumers and businesses. Okay, well, there you go. Really good to get your perspective on not just the challenges, but the opportunities that are out there as well. Jean-Philippe Cotouin, Microsoft International President, good to have you on the program. Thank you.